Hello everyone, Elrond here with part 87 of my Total Terraria World Annihilation. So I am pleased to announce that this cohort marks um, another uh, major um, milestone. Uh, the entire west side of the map has been completely mined out. So there's still the back wall and all that good stuff um, and then also the um, the wooden platform that I left down there um, but all of the physical blocks um, barring stuff that I'll pick up in my quality control when I um, uh, break the walls down um, should be gone um, at some point, it might not show up in this video, but um, in one or two of the videos of the cohort, I do unlock the um, the biome chests that are inside the dungeon as well. So um, those chests and the two blocks per chest um, that's supporting the chests um, are all extracted by the end of the cohort as well. Um, I think there were four biome chests, and two of them I was able to unlock with keys that I had obtained um, beforehand in Thumetown, and then the other two I did farming in Thumetown to um, explicitly get the remainder um, keys. And actually, it was kind of interesting. They wouldn't let me unlock those chests until I defeated Plantera. So, I guess, technically speaking, uh, defeating the Wall of Flesh forever ago wasn't that bad of a mistake. Uh, I guess, technically speaking, I would have liked to have held off on that as long as I could have so I wouldn't have all this crimson junk because um, crimson just spreads too much after you defeat the wall of flesh and so it would have been nice to have more natural biome materials uh, not that it really makes a difference in the end I'm gonna have more materials than I'll ever know what to do with um, I'm actually considering the merits of having that um, that uh, um, base of operations uh, the place with all the chests on the um, on the platforms and the enchanting table and all that good stuff I'm considering keeping that entire area preserved um, once it's time for the museum uh, to be made um, possibly have that be like a courtyard area or something you know so have it you know kinda just be a historic landmark that doesn't really get touched when the when the time comes to actually um, craft the museum itself um, I'll probably use items within the chests but I won't uh, I won't tear anything down um, on that front once uh, once we get to that moment where total Terraria World Annihilation is accomplished. So basically, where the chests lie at that moment, that's where they will stay, and that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if I got around to mentioning it in the previous cohort but um, we hit a weird little snag in our quest for uh, worthless steam hundred percenting of Dark Souls 1 um, I was helping the uh, person I was playing with um, get the uh, NG plus um, four kings and it was quite a struggle, although I'll admit that I did contribute to the problem a little bit. 
at some point I had the wrong pyromancy flame equipped. So I had one that was ascended but not upgraded uh, somehow be the one that I was actively using instead of the one that was um, both ascended and fully upgraded. Um, now, luckily, most of the upgrading takes place before ascending it, which ended up amounting to, like, 50% damage lost. Or, or, I guess, what I'm saying is, um, I do 50% more damage to the four kings per, uh, cast with my proper um, glove rather than the um, ascended but not further upgraded one. But fortunately that was certainly not the make or break point for um, our troubles. Um, eventually we went with the gambit of having him use the plus five chaos claymore um, that ended up being the big winner and so um, it was interesting because at some point we decided to uh, put that on hiatus and start new characters basically with the intention of getting all the um, unique weapons for that one achievement um, more easily and then just give them to our main characters so essentially we basically have low-level clones of ourselves because neither of us chose to change our strategy at all and I think somehow that was going to indirectly eventually lead to us having an easier time with the Four Kings, but then we established uh, another gambit. And so we got to uh, actually succeed in the Four Kings without dealing with those tunes. So probably that project will be uh, set aside until another need for it arises, but I doubt there's going to be another need now that we've got a better way to deal with the Four Kings and whatnot. And we only had time yesterday to do his battle, and so probably tonight we'll do mine. So I don't really see any particular use for those tunes anymore, but um, he thinks they'll be useful if we ever got into a heavy PvP spirit because they can stay at a quote-unquote acceptable soul level while our main characters can level up as much as they damn well please. Which I guess kind of makes sense how that all came about uh, usually he cares more about community and, you know, PvP and, you know, strength of um, competitiveness and whatnot. And I just want to play the damn game, you know. So, like, StarCraft, I never thought of it as a competitive game until uh, he basically showed me that side of it. I always consider it to be a cooperative game, if um, even bothering with multiplayer. So, of course, it seems fitting that uh, he had that particular take on the situation. Once I declared that the tunes were worthless, uh, he f instantaneously found a counter-argument. Well, that's about it for this video. I will see you next video.